distinguished guest. Welcome to the second half of the morning session. Our next presentation is uh, by the second keynote speaker. He's going to talk about opening learning for all, supporting learners, teachers, universities, and workforce development. Our keynote speaker uh, is the Senior Director for Academic Technology Services for the California State University, or CSU, Office of the Chancellor, and the Executive Director of the CSU's Merlot, or Multimedia Educational Resource for Learning and Online Teaching. At the CSU, he oversees the development and implementations of system-wide academic technologies digital library systems and the resources and accessible technology initiative supporting CSU 23 campuses serving about 430,000 students. At Merlot, he directs the development and sustainability of Merlot innovative open education resources, services, and consortium of higher education institutions, professional societies, corporations and uh, other digital libraries. He's also the director of the Center for Usability in Design and Accessibility. Long Beach previously held uh, positions at CSU. Long Beach includes a professor of psychology, director of faculty development, and director of strategic planning. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a big round of applause to Professor Gary Haley. Sawadee, thank you very much for having me here. Let's get the presentation going. There we go. Great. It really is a pleasure to be here, and um, I have fortunately been um, part of the colleagues at the Thai Cyber University for uh, almost 10 years, and being back here in Bangkok is always a pleasure to see my friends and colleagues and, if, uh, and to help move along the strategy for enabling education to be available for all people and keeping it open. And it's just, um, again, a real pleasure for, to be here and I want to thank you very much. And I want to begin with this important element. I think uh, the a uh, presentation from uh, uh, Duke Sung Kwok from this morning uh, is really focused on the talent existing within a society is equally distributed. Everyone, whether you're rich or poor, whether you come from northern Thailand or southern Thailand or from the city or rural or from India or, tai or Taiwan, talent of people is equally distributed, but the problem is the opportunity to develop those talents are not. And why do we have government programs? Is to enable that talent for people everywhere, wherever they are, to develop those talents and bring that talent to enable society to progress, to move forward in a way. And so the question is, how do we bring opportunity to everyone? And the message has been education. Is that methodology, is that initiative, is the way to empower the talent of people? And if you think about your own experiences, how many people are here today because of what they gained from their own education, from a teacher that might have inspired them, or a subject matter that sounded really interesting. How many people raise your hand that you're here because of what you learned in your school at some point? It's okay. Anybody? All right, all right we got some people in the front, right? Because education is really the means by which you can empower people's talent, and it really enables the opportunity for people to learn to discover the talents that are often hidden within. And this is why when you're looking at the 
fourth industrial revolution that we just talked about, a, cr a critical part of what the previous speaker was talking about is how does education have to be transformed to really enable the benefits uh, to society and economic change, to enable more opportunity to be available to everyone because the cost of education is one of the significant barriers for giving people opportunity. When you are poor and you don't have access to internet, you don't have access to infrastructure, you don't have access to experts, then you will not be able to develop those talents. So education really becomes that. And in the area, one of the areas of content, if, you, if we can provide free and open educational resources to everyone. So cost, funding, money does not become a barrier for people learning. Then open education resources can hold the power to empower the talents, to let people discover and learn that their skills can be expanded with the use of other people's knowledge and enable those opportunities for everyone. So education and using free and open materials be can become a critical strategy to advance and develop the talent around the world. And so just a quick overview of what are all these open educational resources. There's lots of names for them. So we have Open Education OER. How many people have heard of OER, Open Education Resources? All right. So they're free, online. They can be learning modules, simulations. They can be videos. They can be tutorials. They can show animations of how the body works or songs of how to think about uh, you know, programming and coding. You also have Open Courseware where you have full structures, syllabi, learning assignments, uh, lectures, notes, full courses that often become the basis for your MOOCs, your massive open online courses. So not only do you have the curriculum that's free for you to have access to, but you often have to have the guided expertise of the faculty member who helps engage you in using that curriculum. There are also free and open textbooks available. And in the United States, the cost of textbooks is one of the significant barriers for students succeeding. Half of the students say they have to take fewer courses per semester because they can't afford the books. And as a consequence, their education gets slowed down, and so does their delay into the workforce, their ability to make money, things along those lines. In the area of research, open access journals is becoming a very important element to sharing the research, so not just the universities who can afford paying the journals, but everyone has access to the latest information. So all this openness, is all driven around free of cost. And you have the freedom to use the materials for your purposes. Openness. And finally, and what's important about when it doesn't cost you and you have the permission, then you can begin to design the learning that will fit in your context. Whether you're in an urban, rural, whether you're doing advanced education or not. And that freedom is so important to enable and open learning for everyone. Okay, there we go. And just to you know, highlight an example, Thai MOOCs 
what you've done in such a small amount of time is phenomenal, right? You have over a hundred courses freely available for everyone, and that has been contributed by over 30 higher education institutions in Thailand. Opening up learning for all through the cooperation of all your institutions, contributing what they can to make learning available is really amazing what you've done. Now, free and open education materials have been around for 20 years. Merlot, the Multimedia Educational Resources for Learning and Online Teaching, were 20 years old this year. Now the question is, why hasn't education been transformed by OER innovations? If this is so good, it's free, it's multimedia, there's all this excitement. Why hasn't it and the next one is, why hasn't OER gone viral, right? Why hasn't everyone been able to use these resources wherever they are at any time? And I think it has to go around understanding the life cycle of innovation. And there are a number of elements of it. The first that's really important is in innovation, you begin with a vision for a better future by doing something differently. That's the inspiration that enables people to be motivated to change. Oh my goodness, if everyone, wherever they lived, had access to recognize their own talents and develop their skills, if they're craftsmen, and then they say, you know what? I want to become more of an entrepreneur. I need to learn about accounting so I can be more financially successful. I have the artistry skills, but not the business skills. Freely available. You, how do you inspire someone with a vision that's a critical aspect for innovation? The second is that once you have a vision, then you have to begin to convince people that the benefits of change is worth their effort. And I'll say this is kind of the politics of innovation. Okay, Why do you have to have the government behind some the fourth industrial revolution to provide the investment why do you have to have the, the Thai Cyber University, why the, the Ministry of Education is supporting this with policies and funding is because there's the politics, and I mean that in a very positive way, to how do you develop people to say, we need to move in this direction and the benefits will serve more and more people. And so once you have the vision, and you get the political support, you get people saying, yes, this sounds like an excellent idea. Then you have to say, how do I institutionalize these innovations? How do I put innovation into practice? How do I take something that is marginal, that people haven't used, it's brand new, and how do I turn that into everyday practice, and that's about implementation. And as we'll talk about, implementation is why innovation fails, right? Because people often get really excited about the vision, they get excited about gathering support, getting people on your side, but now what does it take to make it happen? And, when, and some of the reasons why it's so difficult is we have the ideas, one person can come up with the idea, oh, that's a great one, right? And then the politics, you can get a few people to start marketing the benefits. But when it comes to implementation, 
it takes a lot of people. A lot of people, a lot of resources, and the time and patience to integrate the innovation. And this last part is into everyday life. Now, does everyone have the same everyday life? No, right? And that means, how do I take an innovation and then how do I customize it for Michael or Shelly, right? Or uh, Chow Alert, or anyone here. How do you make that work? That's where it becomes a real challenge. And so when we look at it, it, the failure of innovation, it's on the implementation. So let's begin to look about how do we develop strategies for implementation of innovations. Often the technology and the innovation of technology has been emphasized on the idea and on the political benefit, but not how do you make it work. And so when we think about open education resources, how can we help them really empower talent and enable opportunity so everyone can learn? And so here's just an implementation strategy. This is something that I've used at the California State University and also in international cooperation to begin to think about how you plan implementation. So at the bottom, in the green, it's called leveraging content providers. When you're in education, there are many, many sources of materials that become the fuel of your curriculum. And so there's lots of open education resources. Merlot is one kind of repository, but there's OER Commons. You have your Thai MOOCs, your J MOOCs, your K MOOCs. You have um, SlideShare, you have Flickr, you have many different repositories out there. And what you have to think about is, how do you really use all the resources that are available, just not your specialty? The next level is once you look at all the open education resources, you have to make people's life easy. You have to develop technology to reduce the burden of learning. And so if you make it convenient and affordable, then you have a chance for the next layer up is developing the demand. The first two layers are about what the producers of the innovation will provide. I can organize the information and then I can make it really easy for you to have access to. But then how do you get someone to say, I want that? I would like to learn about that. How do you get them? And when it's brand new, so this is where the communication strategy, this is where the marketing that you might do, the professional development, the training becomes an essential element. And that's why your institution is essential for innovation is because as an institution, you do the professional development of people. You do the communication. You enable people to say, oh, the talent that I have, I can develop that, I can grow that, I can be more successful. And that's the critical role of developing the demand. And at the top level is called enabling your whole ecosystem. And this is where policies. So you were just talking about how your president just laid out a set of policies around priorities for higher education, right? But I'll say policies are great, but if you don't have the leadership behind the policies, if you don't have the people who believe in learning for all, if, that they don't believe that it's important to develop everyone's talent, opportunity for all, then all these other things are going to fall apart. 
And so we're going to talk a, a little bit about leadership, how important that is, and the various business models to enable education to be successful. So when you're thinking about, you have your great idea, you have the political support behind it, then start thinking about what are you doing to implement that idea with these various strategies. And now we'll go through some of these things here. And I'll show you um, some of the projects that I've been involved with are around creating the capabilities to make it easy and convenient and free to have access to educational content wherever you are. So the project, I, we've, and I've talked about this before. How, how many people were here last year? You got a few people here? Okay. So I talked a little bit about Merlot. It's a whole library, and think about what a library is, a place where everyone is welcome, free to explore material. And what Merlot has is a collection of all these open education resources that are free for you. If you want to know about anthropology, zoology, calculus, any of these academic areas, healthcare, nursing, um, radiology, all these materials are available on the web. But if you try to do a Google search, you get a million hits, and they're often not education related. So one of the things we try to do is organize it for you for educational purposes. So that's what we've done in Merlot. And, just want to sh and our job is to make it convenient for you to discover content. And so if you did a search for, for Merlot, so in this example I just typed in DNA, I'm interested to learn about in biology. And so what Merlot does, it gives you a hit list of materials, but we have the reviews for quality and people organizing material around DNA to make it easy and convenient for you. We also have all different types of materials, animations, simulations, tutorials, fully online courses, uh, open access journals, so all different types of materials. But what we've done recently is we added on some additional smart tools to try to make life easier? How do we reduce the burden of learning? And so what we've done is you can go into Merlot, you put a search term in, and at the same time you're searching in Merlot, you can also search many other OER collections. This is around leveraging your content providers. So I, when I typed in DNA, there are, what we have listed there, Another dozen OER collections that are simultaneously searched. So you don't have to search one collection, then go to another, and go to another, and go to another, right? So it just shows it up. So in this example, you have MIT's Open Courseware, and you have um, SlideShare presentations, easy, focused on what your needs are. And the tools that we use are customized to educational purposes. The other aspect we have right here, the smart search, is we go and search the web. Now, again, as I mentioned before, if you just typed DNA into a Google search, you would get stories about paternity suits and all these things that are not, I'll call it, educationally related. So what we've done here with our technology is developed a heuristic that looks at who is searching and what are the types of materials the educator or the learner would like to have around DNA. All right. So with one keyword search, you can get Merlot, you can get all the other open education resources, and you can search the, most, the newest material in, o, uh, in DNA all there on one set of applications. Creating capabilities to make life convenient. Because if you don't make it convenient for people, they're gonna keep on doing this, their past behaviors, okay? And so this is about implementation. So when you're thinking about innovation, how do you make life convenient and affordable? 
Now the other, another, oh, and we have tools where you can bookmark it and organize it for your convenience. The next technology, and just to know all these are free and open for you to use right now, okay? So this isn't just PowerPoint slides, what could be possible. You can implement these on your own. When you go back, if you're a teacher, you're a professor, you're just interested in an area, you can go enable your own learning with these tools right now. Now, as faculty members, how many of you are teachers, faculty in an inst er, institution, right? Okay. Um, trying to find free materials for the courses you teach, because I, I don't want to see a thousand materials about you know, biology. I just want to find what are the textbooks that are aligned with my courses, right? Make my job easy. So what we've done in the California Open Online Library, we've looked at the courses that are taught throughout California, and then we said, what are the free and open textbooks that are aligned with those courses? And so on our website, we have a course showcase where you have over 50 courses right now, and we're continuing to expand that, and I'll show you an example. We also have faculty showcases. They're teaching e-portfolios where faculty are explaining how they're using the free and open textbooks. They're, you see their course syllabus, and they tell the story, why is it so important to have that free and open textbook? In California, our student population, uh, I'll say about 80% of our students, and it's almost a half a million students, are poor enough that they require some amount of financial aid to go to school. And when a $200 textbook is on top of their tu paying their tuition, what happens? They can't afford the book. And they try to complete the class, and they fail. And that's not what we're here. We're here to help them succeed. So by giving them the materials on the first day of class with free materials, we have that chance for them to succeed. And how do you get the faculty to agree, oh, man, th this could be a good idea. And in Merlot, and this is the Cool for Ed, is based on the Merlot Library, and you can find all these free textbooks, and we have over 6,000 free and open e-textbooks in Merlot in all different disciplines. So here's an example, and um, I'll, I just happened to choose this. Um, you know, our previous uh, keynote speaker was talking about coding, right? And so here's a computer introduction to computer science. So what you have here, we have a, you can click on that button, and you can look at what are the learning outcomes for the course that they want to teach, what are the topics to cover, here are four free and open e textbooks in computer programming. And we also had faculty from our different institutions, the University of California, the California State University, and the California Community Colleges, evaluate the quality of these books. And the last thing is we ensured that we did an evaluation of the books so you can see if all students, including those with disabilities, are able to use these materials. If you're blind, have the digital materials been created in a way where assistive technologies can enable those students to also have access to those materials. Because if you're here to provide learning for all, it means learning for all people. The other aspect on the website, and all these are kind of screenshots of the websites that we have here. We created showcases of faculty telling their stories about how important it is for teaching with free materials. And so again, here's an area of computer science. So here's a faculty member telling their stories. Main motivation was around providing access to all his students to enable them to learn. And if you clicked on that button, you'd go to an e-portfolio and you can get all this information. And we have 
uh, about 80 or 90 faculty telling their stories. Okay. Now, part of the reason why this is so important is in developing the demand, in saying people, why should I want to do this? And when you listen to your colleagues tell the story, that helps change people's minds. That helps them say, well, I, I want to do that too. I want my students to be successful as well. Okay. Now, the Merlot Library, the Cool for Ed Library, both of those are focused on um, more academic disciplines. But in order to enable every member of your society to succeed, there are a whole range of disciplines in workforce development that also need to be made available for everyone. If you're in construction, you're in IT, you're in healthcare, um, you're in environmental and sustainability, you're in energy, all these areas, you're in manufacturing, Gesundheit, okay? Where do you get free and open materials in workforce development? Well, another project I run is called Skills Commons, and what I'm gonna show you is uh, uh, that website, I'll just talk a little bit about that in a second, here we go. And this is where the United States Department of Labor invested two billion dollars. Now I don't know what that is in bots, but it's a lot of bots, okay? Two billion dollars and funded community colleges to develop open educational resources for the workforce. And then they came to me and said, now how can you create convenient access to all these materials? So we created a library of all these materials, and right now we have open courseware for almost 700 fully online courses in career and technical training. We have over 1,200 open coursewares for hybrid and blended courses. All these, and it's in advanced manufacturing, construction, information technology, healthcare, and all these are there right now for you to download the files and make them yours. They have a Creative Commons license on it, and that's part of the openness, which means that it gives you permission to reuse, to revise it, change it the way you want, and all you need to do is just attribute it back to the original authors. In a sense, being respectful and polite to reference where the material came from. But it's there for you to use. So if you want to take that material, translate it into Thai. It's yours. You want to have it blended, have a U.S., have English and Thai together, it's yours. You can take as is, take the title, the branding off and stick Thai Cyber University on it, it's yours, okay? In all these areas, skillscommons.org. And I'll show you just a little bit of what this is. In the showcases, we give you examples of how other institutions have reused the material. So one college used it, and then they took a version of it. We also have, we call them makeover strategies, where they more radically changed, they took the content and now made it more interactive. And then I'm gonna show you next the whole open courseware showcase. And so here are the topics, business management, healthcare, developmental education in math, in reading and writing, energy, teaching, IT. And so let me just show you an example of here's some whole certificate programs. So when you're talking about certificates, not just degrees in these various areas, more short-term learning for the workforce. So here's healthcare e-simulations. So here's an example of a whole set, and this is what the website looks like. So you just browse through, kind of find your way through it. And what, what we provide you we have a preview of this. It's already in an open learning management system. 
you can click on a button and download all those materials onto your own laptop, onto your own servers, use them as you wish. We have subject matter expert reviews, people in the field, and these are often industry experts saying these are the skills that we want our employees to have. And I say that's a really important around the collection and skills commons is the universities partnered with industry to say what skills do they need to be employed. And, th and that employment is really the critical aspect, what we're trying to do here. Okay. Uh, and, and again, another example, a whole certificate program in uh, mechatronics. And so again, we have materials about the whole program, and then we have all the individual courses CAD drafting, electrical system, robotics. Now often these are materials that you don't see highlighted in academic institutions, but these are essential for the employment of large majorities of people to enable learning for all to occur. Okay. Now I'm just showing you this is a little visual tool to explore the entire collection. You'll see it on the website. You just roll your cursor over, and so there's healthcare and social assistance. There's over 1,100 materials. You click on that button, and then you can download the material. So this is just a visual tool to see what the whole collection is like. Okay? So you look at this. Boy, Jerry, you've organized the material. It's free for everyone to use. It's pretty convenient to find this stuff. There's hundreds of stuff out there. Well, why hasn't it gone viral? Why hasn't all this happened? Okay. And it comes back to we've taken care of the first two layers. We've leveraged the content providers, brought the materials together. We made it easy for you to discover those things, but we haven't taken care of the top two yet. And so how do you get people to want something? What is it going to take? And this is where innovation is not about technology. It's not about the vision. It's about you. Each person here has the role to enable innovations to become part of everyday life. Innovation is going to involve your friendship with other people to say, hey, have you seen this new thing? Do you think this might help you out? Right? It's the human relationships that help, help people say, I would like to try something new. All right? You have to become the innovator. You are the person when you have to explain to someone why this vision of a better tomorrow and why they may want to change the way they live their life, why they may want to spend their time learning about accounting, right? You're the person who has to represent that innovator who had the original idea. And unless each of us begins to take on that role of being the ingredient for innovation, to become the role of the innovator, change will not happen. Okay. And why is this so important here? And it's because at the top of the pyramid, enabling innovation is about enabling e the ecosystem. When you go back to your institution, when you go back to your workplace, when you go back to your family, when you go back to your friends, there is local circumstances that are unique to the people you live with. And because you understand the needs, you understand the opportunities that might be available, you have that chance 
to lead them to an innovative path. You have the chance to invite them to participate. That's what leadership is all about and being sensitive to what other people need. Because if you don't have leadership, nothing happens. As I said, you understand people's priorities and need, you understand the local culture, the policies, and the various business models that are there. So without people leading the communication, leading the professional development, leading the social support for change, innovation fails. And, I, and I've seen, I've been in higher education for over 33, 34 years, and seen lots of great ideas, but everyone else thinks someone else needs to implement it. Do it for me. But for innovation to succeed, you have to take that leadership role and do it yourself. Innovation requires more innovators. So you are the person who are going to open the doors of opportunity and by being a trusted friend, and now I'm going to talk about this next critical aspect here. This implementation of innovation that what do you have to do to become that innovator to enable to put innovations into practice and I'm being serious here and it sounds a little corny but when all the focus is on these advanced technologies are on all these different high level policies it comes down to friendship okay it comes down to you caring for other people where other people's problems are more important than your own when a friend asks for help what do you do do you say now nah, I'm too busy is that what a friend does no a friend says let me help How many people have done things that they never expected to do because a friend invited them? Raise your hand. Right? Friends help you do innovative things. And why? They know you. They know the talents that you have. And they know that you will trust them to have a good time. Right? Because when you're doing new things, it can be frightening. It's going to change my life. What might I do? But a friend will say, come on, it'll be okay. I'll do it with you. We'll have fun. I've done it before, right? Friendship. You enable friends. It's not only how they do fun things, but do friends provide you the social support when you're going through challenges? Is going through school easy? Or are there some really challenging times when you begin to question, is this worth it? Am I, do I have the talent to really learn the accounting or the programming? But friends give you that support. They say, you can do it, you can do innovative things. And after it's all done, friends share good times and they really open up those opportunities. Now, it may sound funny when you're coming through a strategic plan for innovation for the 21st century learner and you say, how are you going to make friends? But what I've seen over the years is that is what makes innovation, how you implement innovation. Friends understand the complex situations and the hidden talents within people. And I have to say, I've been honored to be and working with many of the folks in Thai Cyber University. I see Anna Root right here and Michael, and I see Supani and Ta, and I see a number of people that I've met over the years. And it's because of friendships, and oh, Anna Chai, and uh, Amy, hey, how you doing Amy? Get all, all your folks here 
have enabled us to work together and come up with creative ideas that move us forward. And again, people are really important. The required ingredient for successful implementation of innovation. To be a friend of learners who trust you on their journey. Okay? So this is a critical theme. Um, it's a principle that I have. Um, give a gift and not a burden. Right? So when you're thinking about innovation, you have to think about what other people need. What is it that will be a gift to them that will make their lives better, easier? All right? And understanding that becomes very important. Now I'm going to do a little... Um, a little exercise right here. I, I want to. I want. Uh, I'm going to ask you a question. Who likes chocolate? R raise your hand. Who likes chocolate? Oh, all right. So I saw this person right here. Raise your hand. Chocolate. Real. I was really quick. Now, Jin, I know you were. You were quick too, right? So why don't you come up here? Okay. Okay. So, so here's some chocolate. Okay. All right. You like chocolate? All right. Good. Good. Uh, here, here's some chocolate. All right. Now, um, and I've, I've forgotten your name. Shanita. Oh, Shanita, right. Thank you. So, she, did, did you expect to get chocolate? No, no right, right. Okay. Is, is it a good thing? Like you like it, right? And it's a good amount, right? Okay. And this is, and you can share it with friends. Now, th thank you very much. So, now this example, all right, of give a gift and not a burden. Part of giving a gift when it comes from a friend, it's unexpected. It's good, and in part, I asked if she liked chocolate, so I knew she was going to like it, right? Okay, right? All right? And, and it's like a good amount, so you can share it with other people, but if you don't want, uh, you know, you could just eat it all yourself, right? Okay, okay. And this is, think about innovation. When you want to implement innovation, think of it like, how do I have to give a gift how do I can give them chocolate or ice cream or whatever their favorite food? What is it that will get them to say, and you said, thank you, right? Innovation should result in someone saying, thank you. You've made my life better. You've made my future more exciting. You've made who I believe in myself, the talent that I have, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to develop that talent. That's about, think about what you need to do in your institution with the people you're working with to implement innovation through friendship. Now, we're coming to the end here. Now we have, there's lots of dots of opportunity. In a sense, your institutions throughout Thailand are places where you have opportunities. Now, some of the people who were last year may, may remember this a little bit, okay? Um, so you look at these dots and you say, can you tell me what that is, what all those dots are? Right? In a sense, the world can provide some dots, some spots of opportunity, but when I look at that, how do I kind of see what I can do to take advantage of that? Now, there's a few more green dots, and partly of what open education resources that you could get through Merlot and Skills Commons can provide some of those additional dots freely available for you 24-7 whenever you're online that can fill in the spaces between what your institutions do. Okay? But can anybody tell me what that is yet? Or does it just look like a bunch of dots? All right? Still looks like a bunch of dots, right? And this is why what the Thai Cyber University does is so important. And this is the next one. All right? They, they fill in, they connect all your institutions. So why do you have over 100 MOOCs? Because 
Thai Cyber University help connect all your institutions to create a shared repository of over 100 courses contributed by over 30 institutions. And how did that happen so quickly? It's because of the friendships that you have developed over the years in serving the people of Thailand with education. The dedication of the people, the trust that you've built has been essential. And just so you know, if you want to know more about OER, I'm doing a workshop on Friday. You can taste Merlot virtually, it's no wine, and you can have a picnic. But here's the really key aspect here. Shall we make education more successful? And sometimes, how many people feel like this? When you're working late at night, you have to get something done. You say, oh my goodness, I'm trying to change the world, but I just don't feel. And so really, this is where working together as friends that we can really change the world with innovation together. So I want to thank you very much. I really do, Kapun uh, Klop, really do appreciate that, your time. And, um, and I'll, I'll be here for the rest of the time. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much, uh, Professor Gary Haley from uh, California State University, USA, for your inspiring presentation.